Hey, this is Expose. Welcome to today's episode, and I'm your regular host, Tony Akinyemi. We have been addressing the various types of cardiovascular problems in general, and particularly hypertension, over several episodes. Uh, last week, we signed off on the 10th approach or intervention to cardiovascular problems that is adopted by official medicine or medical science. Time did not allow us to elaborately deal with that. So I'll be taking off from that one today. But before I deal with that number 10, let me run you through again for the purpose of revision. Uh, the 10 things, among others, that medical science deploys to address cardiovascular problems in general and hypertension in particular. One is they use a group of drugs called diuretics. We have explained that. Number two, they use a group of drugs called beta blockers. We have explained that as well. Number three, they use a group of drugs called calcium channel blockers. We have also explained that. Number four, they use ACE inhibitors. Number five, they use blood thinners. Number six, they use cholesterol-lowering drugs, otherwise known as statins. And number seven, they use sedatives and relaxants to sedate, to make people sleep, and to relax uh, their muscles and calm down the tension and the nerves. And number eight, they use angiotensin II receptor antagonists. Number nine, they use direct renin inhibitors. And number 10, they use some invasive procedures to correct cardio cardiovascular problems. That was where we signed off last week. So I'll be starting off from there today. Uh, the first invasive procedure is open heart surgery, uh, which is uh, a very, very delicate uh, surgical operation, but which may be indicated for some people. And then they do angioplasty. I've also explained that where they mechanically widen narrowed or obstructed arteries to improve blood flow and blood circulation. And the one we signed off on was on bypass surgery, where a blood vessel is almost completely blocked, and then they take another blood vessel from another part of the body to create a bypass, so that the one that is almost blocked is condemned, and a new channel is created for blood to flow through. And that costs an arm and a leg. Definitely not everybody can afford that kind of surgical intervention where there is no insurance to pay for it except you have insurance to cover it. Uh, like I told you last week, one of my friends told me that that surgery cost nothing less than 45,000 US dollars in the USA. Now another invasive procedure is the stent procedure where they insert a stent, the blood vessel. Then there's another invasive procedure where they install pacemakers to help the heart to beat uh, stronger uh, and better. And then another invasive procedure which is uh, probably the father of them all, is a heart transplant. When the heart is completely condemned, and then they get another person's heart, or a, another heart, and they put it inside the person, which is a heart transplant. Incidentally, the very first human heart transplant that was ever conducted on the planet was actually conducted in Africa in the year 1967, in the city of Cape Town, South Africa. That was where the first heart, successful heart transplant in human beings was conducted. So Africa, indeed, is the first in this particular one. But of course, <laughs> I am not going to recommend that you wait for a heart transplant. Rather, you can rebuild your heart, you can recreate your heart through your diet and lifestyle and faith in God. Now, so this effectively brings us to the first part of this conversation where we are trying to analyze the problem, understand what the problem is, what are cardiovascular diseases, the different types, and then uh, how do you make sense of them, and how does medical science attempt to address these conditions. That's what we've been having a conversation around all this while, in this past four episodes or so. And this is the fifth episode in this series, and today, I want to commence on part two. Definitely, we cannot finish today. We are going to continue in the next episode. And in this part two, what I want to do is to give you my eight prong strategy for preventing or reversing hypertension in particular and other cardiovascular diseases in general. But before then, 
I'd like to give you some very profound statements. I call them food for thought. The first one is going to come from Thomas Edison himself, that great inventor. He was the one that invented the light bulb. He was born in the year 1847 and he died in the year 1931. And this was what Thomas Edison said, and I quote, he said, the doctor of the future will give no medicine, but will interest his patients in the care of the human body, in diet, and in the cause and prevention of disease. You can see how the mind of Thomas Edison was working. It was far ahead of his time, far ahead of his time. He could see into the future, and he predicted that the doctor of the future will give no medicine. And don't forget that I have been saying what we need is not more medication, but more education. And this is exactly what Thomas Edison said. The doctor of the future will give no medicine, but will interest his patients in the care of the human body. Preventive measures, as well as in diet and understanding the cause and the prevention of disease. That is holistic medicine. All right? I'll give you a second food for thought from no less a person than Dr. Alexis Carroll. Dr. Alexis Carroll was a Nobel Prize winner in medicine. He was one time head of the Rockefeller Institute in New York, a medical doctor as well as a researcher, and he made this prediction in the year 1936. Hear yeah, what he said. Dr. Alexis Carroll said, and I quote, unless the doctors of today become the dietitians of tomorrow, the dietitians of today will become the doctors of tomorrow. And that's very profound. In fact, I call that a prophetic statement. And that prophecy is already being fulfilled right before our eyes. People are getting tired and fed up of swallowing chemicals and chemicals and chemicals every day. People want natural solutions, okay? And that's what a medical doctor predicted as far back as 1936, 84 years ago. In the next 60, uh, 14 years, it will be 100 years that this man made this prediction. He too could see far into the future. He said, unless the doctors of today become the dietitians of tomorrow, the dietitians of today will become the doctors of tomorrow. Okay? The third food for thought for today is coming from one guy that lives in Lagos, Nigeria. I know him very closely. His name is Tony Akiyami. <laughs> and this is what he said, and I quote, he says, health does not flow from a bottle or a syringe. Instead, Health is largely the product of lifelong decisions and choices. Health is largely the product of lifelong decisions and choices. All right? And that's very, very profound. Very profound. Uh, I said that in one of my books. That is where I called it from. Okay. Now, the fourth food for thought for today is from another doctor. Dr. P.K. Sharp. This is what he said. He said, genetics is the loaded gun, but it is our diet and lifestyle that pull the trigger. Genetics is a loaded gun. It is our diet and lifestyle that pull the trigger. What Dr. Sharp is saying here is to try to demystify or try to debunk, as it were, the myth that people carry about that the reason they have the medical condition they have is because they inherited it from their parents. They blame everything on heredity. Don't misunderstand me. I believe there is something related to heredity. There are hereditary diseases. I am not disputing that. There are disorders that can be transmitted from one generation to another generation, from parents to children and so on and so forth. But they are not as elaborate as we have made them to look like. Maybe again, we will dedicate an episode in the future to understanding genetics and epigenetics. To see how diseases can be transmitted from generation to generation and how to make those genetic predispositions to be turned off or to be rendered dormant. 
such that despite the fact that genetically speaking, your parents have transmitted the genes that predisposes you to a particular disease, even though that gene is in your blood, is in your body, you can still turn it off. You can make it dormant by not creating a conducive environment for that gene expression. Okay? Only 25% of our genes automatically express. The remaining 75%, you have to trigger them for them to express. You have to switch them on for them to express. And we switch them on through our thoughts. As a man thinks in his heart, so is he. We switch them on through our diet and lifestyle. We switch them on through stress. We switch them on through toxicity. We switch them on through deficiencies. We switch them on through uh, all, all kinds of uh, lifestyle issues that help to trigger the onset of the expression of this genetic predisposition or weaknesses. So Dr. P. Kesha says, your gene is only a loaded gun. It is your diet and your lifestyle that will pull the trigger, that will switch it on, that will fire the gunshot. So even if you have the gene for diabetes or hypertension or arthritis or cancer that you inherited from your parents, it does not mean that you will automatically develop those diseases in your lifetime. You will only develop those diseases if you switch on the genes through your diet and your lifestyle by creating a conducive environment for those gene expressions. That's what it means. And I think that's a piece of good news there. So you don't have to have or suffer from the same diseases that your parents or grandparents suffered from. All right. Food for thought number five for today. I got it from the website healthmyths.net. Healthmyths.net. Okay. And it says, unhealthy diet and lifestyle account for more than 80% of heart disease, more than 90% of type 2 diabetes, and more than 70% of stroke and colon cancer. In other words, your diet, your lifestyle, my diet, my lifestyle are responsible for more than 80% of heart disease, including hypertension, heart failure, heart attacks, and so on and so forth, and all the different cardiovascular problems that we have mentioned. Eight out of ten of them caused by diet and lifestyle, which means that if we get our diet and lifestyle in order, we can actually prevent 80% of heart diseases. And it says more than 90% of type 2 diabetes is diet-related. It's a metabolic problem. Okay, so if we get our diet and lifestyle right, we can also prevent 90% of diabetes. In other words, 9 out of 10 people that have diabetes developed it through their diet and lifestyle, not through heredity, not through any other thing other than their own diet and lifestyle. And hopefully, again in the future, I've made a lot of promises now, we will also be addressing diabetes in the future, just like we're addressing hypertension right now. As a matter of fact, my daughter and I have collaborated and we have written a book. We have authored a book on diabetes titled Defeating Diabetes. Defeating Diabetes. Co-authored by Tony Akiyemi and Dr. Melody Akiyemi. She's a medical doctor. I'm a nutritional consultant and we collaborated to author that book. That book is available online. You can also obtain a copy and you can also have hard copies of the book at our bookshop in Lagos, Nigeria, for those of you who are in Lagos. And then more than 70% of stroke and colon cancer are diet-related, lifestyle-related. So you see how powerful your diet and your lifestyle can be in either causing diseases or preventing diseases or reversing diseases. That's why I always say, whatever goes through your mouth into your body is going there to do one of two things. It is either going inside your body to cause a problem or to solve a problem. So before you swallow anything, before you allow anything to go into your body, you need to conduct an interview to the, for that thing. What are you going to do in my body? Are you going to cause a problem or solve a problem? Alright, so a healthy diet and lifestyle, okay, account for more than 80% of heart disease, 90% of type 2 diabetes, and more than 70% of stroke and colon cancer. Food for thought number six, 
again by the, that guy from Lagos, Nigeria, Tony Akiyemi. <laughs> he says, whereas many diseases are contagious, disappointingly, health is not. Each person has to cultivate his or her own. You can catch a disease from another person, but you cannot catch health from another person. You have to cultivate your own health. That places the responsibility squarely on you to cultivate your own health and squarely on me to cultivate my own health. The ball is in our court. Food for thought number seven is from the Holy Bible. And I like the message translation of Proverbs chapter 19 verse 3. It says, people ruin their lives by their own stupidity. So why does God always get blamed? Wow, wow, wow. People ruin their lives. How? By their own stupidity. So why does God always get blamed? And there are people who are dying, who are sick, who are blaming God. God, why did you allow this to happen to me? Why are you looking at me and you're not sorting me out? And blah, 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 blah. As if God was responsible for their problem. The Bible says in Proverbs chapter 19, verse 3, it says people ruin their lives by their own stupidity. Stupidity is foolishness. It means not knowing the right thing or knowing the right thing and not doing the right thing. Either actively assaulting, insulting, and abusing your own body, or passively neglecting the needs of your body. Either way, your body can break down, develop disease. Then you don't have anyone to blame, but to take responsibility at the end of the day. Okay? That's food for thought number seven. Now, We'll go for a short break at this time. When I'm back, we will be talking about the eight predisposing factors that make people develop cardiovascular diseases in general and hypertension in particular. And then we are going to develop eight strategies around those eight predisposing factors. Don't go away. I'll be back shortly. I believe you've been having a terrific time with me on Expose with Tony Akinyemi. We have great resources that will bless your life, available to you on healthy living and many other life subjects. We have various platforms where you can obtain materials for your blessing. You can obtain some of our work, our books, particularly on Amazon.com. How to Regain and Retain Your Health is a book title that I highly recommend. It's available in digital format, Kindle edition, as well as in printed version. We also have juices and smoothies for healing, health, and pleasure. You can also find these items at another website, familabooks.com. F-A-M-I-L-A books.com. And for those of you who are in Nigeria, you can reach us at the Shepherd Store, 18 Shogunle Street, of Mobilaji Bank Anthony Way behind HFS Place to get our materials. We have over 600 recorded audio CDs, DVDs, VCDs, and MP3 on various subjects. All these things that I teach on Expose are already available in their complete format. How to reverse hypertension naturally, how to reverse diabetes naturally, how to reverse arthritis naturally, and many other wonderful titles. I encourage you to visit this website, Amazon.com, FamilaBooks.com, or CSS Bookstores in Ikeja, Lagos, Nigeria, and you will be blessed reading those materials and sharing them with your friends and family. Thank you once again. God bless you. Welcome back. This is Expose, and I'm your regular host, Tony Akinyemi. We've been having a conversation around cardiovascular diseases in general and hypertension in particular. And um, we have looked so far at different profound statements made by experts as well as by God in the Holy Bible. And right now I want to talk about in my own understanding, I am not a medical doctor. I am a nutritional consultant, a holistic health practitioner, and I have found out, I didn't read this from any book, 
it was in the place of prayer and meditation that I got the inspiration and I just noted them as they came to me. Of course, each of those points are not necessarily my original ideas, but they are things that are corroborated all over the place in all the literature. If you get into medical literature or textbooks that are written by individuals, you will find some of these or all of these thoughts already expressed in there. I just sat down one day asking myself, if someone approaches me and is dealing with hypertension and wants me to offer my support and help in their journey to recovery from hypertension, to reverse hypertension, what would be my plan? That was the question I asked as I was meditating and praying. And then I took my paper and I began to write, as I got inspired, eight things. And that helped me to understand the eight areas that need to be addressed. Those are the root causes of all these cardiovascular problems. Those are the root causes. If you address those root causes, you can uproot these problems from your body and be free from these conditions. So the first predisposing factor, as a person of faith, I am a pastor also. I'm a theologian, okay? I have a degree in theology. And so I'm speaking from a biblical world view. And as one who knows God and who has walked with God, I got born again April 1978. And I have been walking with Jesus ever since, reading my Bible, praying to God regularly, so, from the biblical perspective, there are some spiritual factors that can be responsible for different medical conditions. And so, the first predisposing factor to cardiovascular diseases and to most of virtually any type of disease for that matter, they are, I call them spiritual factors. If you look at the healing ministry of our Lord Jesus Christ, you will find out there that he actually cured some people by casting out demons from them. Once the demons were cast out, their diseases resolved. So their diseases were not caused by natural factors. They were caused by spiritual factors. And once the root cause, the demonic influence behind their diseases were dealt with, they got free. If the sun shall set you free, you shall be free indeed. Okay? So there are many factors under that. We'll be discussing them in detail. I call them spiritual factors. That's the first predisposing factor that can culminate in any kind of disease. For example, there was uh, a time I went to minister in a particular city in Nigeria. I held a three-day conference in that city. And um, a number of people came to attend my seminar and my preaching. And I ministered to the sick. I prayed for them, laid hands on them, and, and ministered healing to them. And one of them that I met in that city was actually on crutches. He had POP in both legs, and he had crutches. And I asked him, how did you, how did you sustain this uh, fracture that required, uh, did you have an auto crash, did you have a domestic accident, or what exactly happened? And I was, I was shocked to my bones when he narrated his experience. This man was never involved in any crash, never involved in any auto crash or domestic accident or whatsoever. He said he was sleeping in his own bedroom or in his own bed in his own house alone. And while he was asleep, he had a dream. And in that dream, he was in a vehicle, in an automobile, and then that vehicle crashed. He had an automobile accident in that dream. And in that dream, his two legs were fractured. The bones of the two legs were fractured in the auto crash that occurred in his dream. And then he began to experience, experience excruciating pains in his legs while asleep. And it was that excruciating pain that woke him up from his sleep. And when he woke up and came around, he found himself sweating and he couldn't lift his two legs. And it was, the pain was real in real life. That's mysterious. I mean, this is somebody I know face to face. They didn't tell me. I was the one that interviewed him and asked him how he sustained the fracture that warranted the POP 
and the crutches that he was on when I went to preach and hold a, a seminar in that city in Nigeria. And he said he couldn't lift his legs on his bed and they were heavy and painful so he had to cry out and they took him to the hospital. By the time they x-rayed the legs, they found that the legs were actually fractured. Actually fractured. That's why they had to reset the bones and they had to put POP, give him painkillers and antibiotics and give him crutches. And he was already starting to, you know, to rehabilitate, to walk a little bit here and there. How else do you explain that? I call that a spiritual factor. There are some mystery diseases that are inexplicable by science. Science does not understand it. Science cannot explain it. Okay? But they are real. The Bible is replete with such instances. There was a woman in Luke chapter 13, for example, who was bent over for 13 years, or for 18 years rather. And Jesus Christ saw her and said, Ought not this woman, being a daughter of Abraham, be set free from her infirmity? And the Bible says Jesus rebuked the spirit of infirmity, and then she straightened up. Spiritual factors. Okay? Let me not elaborate too much. <laughs> we'll be coming back to that one by one. I will take my time to explain the steps and the measures to take to address each of these predisposing factors. Okay? So those whose lives are not hidden in Christ, in God, are vulnerable. They can experience satanic attacks. Psalm 103, verse 4 mentions that. Okay? But those of us whose lives are hidden in Christ, we have divine protection. You can see that Job could not be accessed by the devil because God had put a protection around him. We will come to that. But let me go through the eight predisposing factors to hypertension, cardiovascular diseases in particular, and maybe by extension, by extrapolation to other diseases as well. The first predisposing factor are spiritual factors. They are all group of factors. The second predisposing group of factors are what I call psycho-emotional factors. Some people develop hypertension because of psychological or emotional challenges, problems, issues that they are facing in their lives that is making them to be worried or to be afraid for the future. Okay? Those are psycho-emotional factors. Some have marital problems, some have business problems, financial problems, academic problems, ministry problems, all kinds of challenges of life can shoot up somebody's BP if they don't address those problems adequately and appropriately. The third group of factors are nutritional factors that relates to your diet, what you eat and what you don't eat, what you drink and what you don't drink and so on and so forth. If you correct your diet there and balance your nutritional factors, your vitamins, your minerals, and your macronutrients, and there is no deficiency, there is no excess, there is no toxicity, there is no, none of those things, then your BP and various other numbers can be normalized. So I call those nutritional factors that can contribute to the development of hypertension. The fourth Factor, predisposing factor is the integrity of your blood. What is the integrity of your blood? Is your blood too thick or your blood too thin? Is the amount of insulin in your blood too high? The amount of iron in your blood too high? The amount of cholesterol in your blood too high? What is your lipid profile? What is the amount of triglycerides in your blood? All of those things, the constituents of your blood, the amount of platelet, the amount of your PCV, the amount of hemoglobin, the amount of, um, you know, clotting factors, vitamin K, fibrin, and so on and so forth. All the constituents of your blood must be in the right proportion. If anything is out of whack, that can set the stage for the development of hypertension or cardiovascular diseases and indeed other diseases as well. That is number four, the integrity of your blood. Number five, predisposing factor, has got to do with the integrity of your blood vessels. You will not find all these things I'm cataloging in any textbook to the best of my knowledge. Like I told you, it was by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit that I cataloged them. The integrity of your blood vessels. What is the quality, the integrity of your blood vessels? 
Are your blood vessels still retaining their elasticity? Can they dilate and constrict? Are they fragile or strong enough? Is there plaque deposit in your blood vessels? Is there atherosclerosis? Is your aorta the way it should be or it has unfolded? Your blood vessels, the integrity, it matters. That is another factor that can predict your cardiovascular health. Now, number six has to do with toxicity, your internal cleanliness. How clean is your inside or how dirty is your inside? That is a factor that can influence your blood pressure, your cardiovascular health, and in fact, any other disease for that matter. So the sixth predisposing factor to cardiovascular diseases has to do with your internal cleanliness. Number seven predisposing factor has to do with your cardiomusculoskeletal condition. Cardio, the condition of your heart. Musculo, the condition of your muscles. And skeletal, the condition of your bones. Your anatomy, as it were. How fit, how strong, how healthy are your muscles, how healthy are your bones, your bone marrow producing your blood, how healthy is your heart itself, okay? That is cardiomusculoskeletal condition. And number eight group of predisposing factor has to do with your genetics, your genes that you inherited from your parents, your race, whether you are Caucasian or you are a person of color, and then your gender, whether you are male or female. All of these factors, I group them under other factors, the eight group of factors that can influence your cardiovascular health. Okay? These are the eight predisposing factors that help to determine your cardiovascular health in particular and your general health in general. And so, when we are developing a strategy to prevent cardiovascular diseases or hypertension in particular, or to reverse them, we have to build those strategies around these eight predisposing factors. In other words, we have to address the spiritual factors. I'll be talking about them in details in the next episode. We have to address psycho-emotional factors, stress management skills, conflict avoidance, conflict resolution, sleep, proper sleep, adequate sleep, sleep therapy, okay, uh, you know, recreation, and so on and so forth. All of those things that deal with our psyche and our emotions, dealing with toxic emotions such as anger, unforgiveness, resentment, bitterness, fear, anxiety, worry, and so on and so forth. Those are all psycho-emotional factors that can influence your cardiovascular health. You have to learn the skills and receive the grace from God to be able to address them. The third factor, nutritional factors, you have to learn how to eat right. I have the plus and minus principle there. There are some things you must stop eating if you want your BP to normalize, and there are some things you must start eating if you want to get well. Okay, that's nutritional. Then the integrity of your blood, your blood must be good, it must be pure, it must not be too thick, not, not too much homocysteine, not too much cholesterol, and so on and so forth. Then your blood vessels must be cleaned out, must restore the integrity, must be able to, it must be elastic, must be able to dilate and constrict. Then your inside must be clean, it must detoxify. A kidney cleanse, liver cleanse, gallbladder cleanse, and so on and so forth, colonic irrigation, a lymphatic drainage, and toxic uh, emotion. Uh, must be addressed as well. Then cardio uh, musculoskeletal, that talks about your exercise regime, your body mass index, and so on and so forth. Then we have to address the issue of uh, genetics, race, and gender, how to switch off or make those predisposing genes dormant, as well as addressing issues relating to race and relating to gender. When you take all these eight into consideration in your plan, in your strategy, and you address all those eight areas, I cannot see that hypertension that will not respond. I cannot see one. By the special grace of God, all of them, it doesn't matter the type of hypertension, malignant hypertension, resistant hypertension, uh, uh, primary hypertension, essential hypertension, or second, all of them will resolve once you follow these eight strategies meticulously. Thank you for your time today. Please don't forget to remind your friends and neighbors to join us on Expo Say every Monday 8 p.m. Nigerian time on YouTube, Facebook, and Instagram. Join our 
teeming population of viewers on all those three platforms by liking us on Facebook, following us on Instagram, and subscribing to our YouTube channel and pressing the notification but button. Uh, we hope to see you same time next week as we continue to take each of these factors one by one and break them down into greater details. Don't forget, what we need is not more medication, but more education. And the best prescription is knowledge. God bless you. My name is Olani Keyala Deshuyi, a graduate of Rafa Institute of Healthy Living, a school run by Reverend Tony Akiyemi, where we are taught how to take care of our health using basic healthy living principles. My coming into contact with the school has changed my life for the better. Prior to that time, I had been diagnosed with arthritis, I had pains all over me, I had difficulty in breathing. But since I decided to take the principles taught in the school seriously and I followed them, I discovered that my health has improved, I am free of pain, my breathing has stabilized to such an extent that I can run a gym. Can you beat that? So, I want to invite you. Come, join us at Rafa Institute of Healthy Living. Let's learn together how to reverse supposedly irreversible diseases using nutrition and lifestyle. All are basic principles. Your life will not remain the same again.